Hello, and welcome to new, the New York Baltic Film Festival and to the Q&A for Amelia, Queen of the Press, screening both at Scandinavia House in New York and virtually throughout the US. The festival is organized and presented by Scandinavia House and in collaboration with the Consul General of Estonia, the Consul General of Lithuania and the Permanent Mission of Latvia to the United Nations in New York. Financial support for the festival comes from the Estonian Film Institute, the National Film Center of Latvia, and the Lithuanian Film Center, with additional sponsorship by the Lithuanian Cultural Institute, the American L Latvian Association, LV100, Printful PBLA Cultural Fund, and the Lithuanian Foundation, as well as the Embassy of Latvia in Washington, D.C. Moderating today's talk is Yula Rosici, the head of programming for the film festival. Yula has worked as a film programmer programmer at festivals all over the world, the Tribeca Film Festival, the Stockholm Film Fe Festival, the Baltic Sea Docks in Riga, and the New York Baltic Film Festival. In 2016, Rosidi was honored to be on the jury of the Latvia National Film Awards and participated in the pre-selection committee the following year. So please welcome Yula. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome and, and thank you for watching Emilia, Queen of the Press at the New York Baltic Film Festival. Uh, today we have with us director of one of the two episodes you've seen, Kristina uh, Jelva, and we have actress Guna Zarenia. Uh, Kristina was is actually an alum of the festival and participated in 2018 with her film Media's Journey. And Guna Zarenia is one of the most well-known actresses and most prolific actresses in Latvia. So thank you both for, for making it to our online Q&A. And to uh, warm us up a little and get us a little um, uh, acquainted with the project, I'd like to hear how both of you got started. How did you get involved with Emilia? Okay, maybe I'll start all the long way in short. Um, mm -hmm. It was summer of uh, 2020, year before. We were living here under pandemic. We were living in a lockdown, actually, like as we are living now, but for different purposes, unfortunately. It was, um, it was a time before vaccine and all cinema industry was stopped. Cinemas were closed, industry was stopped. And then our film center came out with initiative to give a money, to give a support for uh, two mini series for two projects, uh, which are not, um, let's say, which are not uh, commercial or which are not just entertainment, but with two projects, which are with some additional value, with some historical or artistical or intellectual background. And our company, we participated in this competition. Compet competition was quite tough quite hard because a lot of companies, film producers, they wanted to work and earn money and do um, some do their profession in this lockdown time. So competition was quite hard, but we won. But I have to admit that also for these winners, for these two companies, rules and conditions also were quite tough because everything starting from research and it's, you know, it's historical topic. You do need research, uh, including script writing, casting, uh, scout, uh, location scout, uh, preparation of props, costumes, set design, then shooting, editing, sound design, everything uh, should be done within one year. And if you are familiar with uh, film business or making films at one year for historical series, six small films, let's say, it's extremely um, short period of time. So it was, it was a challenge. And Guna, at what stage did you get involved? Who invited you? Um, uh, the producer, Gins Grube, called me in the same summer, in the summer of 2020. And uh, when, how I understood he had the only idea, no, no script, no money, no crew, just uh, he has a plans about some directors and cameraman Andres Rudzats. And so, and he asked me for my yes to this um, Emily's role and uh, I thought a while because it was how uh, Christina told it was the middle of the pandemic and no one could imagine how it 
will develop and uh, how it uh, how will be our schedules in theater and in other projects and so and uh, of course I said yes and uh, eventually it became a, a unique opportunity for all involved and uh, ironically thanks to pandemic but uh, uh, yeah we we could do it in such short, unbelievably short time period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so and I, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and I have to admit that, uh, yeah, about these pluses of pandemic or opportunities of pandemic that, of course, OSHIDU was extremely tough and we worked very fast in a very fast way. But the good news were <laughs> for us, for filming crew, that theaters were closed. And all actors were in our disposal, so they didn't have research, uh, they didn't have a place, they didn't have uh, busy evenings, they didn't have to rehearse a new play or a new piece. So um, it was very good that we could, uh, could use best actors of our theaters and they were free. Yeah, that sounds, uh, sounds like a fun, fun once in a lifetime project. Um, Christine, like you mentioned, Emilia Benjamin is very well known in Latvia already. Uh, maybe not in the rest of the Baltic states. Uh, I'll leave that up to the audiences to, to, to tell how much they already knew. But um, how much did each of you know in detail? And what did you learn about Emilia from this project? Like, was there something that surprised you? Yeah. Um, Emilia Benjamin, she's, you know, she's. I would say she's extremely well-known character and well-known person. Uh, I have to tell a small history or a short history of this character because uh, she was one of the most prominent women of pre-war Latvia. She was one of the first business women and she was influencer of press and influencer of fashion. She was fashionista and she was one of the wealthiest or maybe even the most wealthiest woman in pre-war Latvia. And during Soviet occupation, and I'm a child of Soviet time, I was born in 1970 and it was Soviet period and Soviet occupation and it wasn't accepted to speak about this history, which was before, before Second World War. But almost in every family, there were these uh, magazines, output, or let's say leisure, maybe in English, uh, these copies of the magazine, and people still in Soviet time used to read and reread them and keep memories about this independent state of Latvia and about how it was before and all the legends, how it was before before Soviet occupation. So name of family Benjamin was in, you know, I knew her, I knew the legend of her. I knew this legend uh, how the Pinks proposed her fate in uh, Siberia in a deportation. No one speaked about this in so-called official history or official narrative, but it was live legend in all families. So she's, I would say she's a legendary person. Mm -hmm. And when we started to research her more deeply, uh, working on this mini series, of course, uh, I get to know a lot of historical facts. Maybe I didn't know. I also saw, and we find also, um, let's say, her other side, because, of course, she wasn't an ideal woman or ideal person. She had her dark side as well, as we all have. And uh, maybe I uh, research and learn more about the uh, press situation and how worked Latvian press or Baltic press or pre-war press uh, in general. So, but of course the character, she was extremely popular, yeah. Mm -hmm. Guna, did you learn anything yeah. new that you didn't know? Uh, uh... Of course, every Latvian knows something about Emily, as uh, Christine said. And uh, uh, during uh, filming, also uh, on the set, every our extra in in our film wanted to tell some uh, 
and it was important for them uh, to tell some uh, his family, his uh, story about Emily, and uh, everybody has some relative who was uh, in some relationship with uh, Emily or her house or her um, house uh, house workers, and so and. Um, uh, of course, I uh, got to new many new things about, and as Christine told about this, uh, non not so nice side of uh, the, of Emily also, but um, but I think uh, uh, the best way how to get to know Emily. Uh, uh, was uh, is uh, through the magazine she created through output because there we can uh, see the world the lifestyle the life uh, that she wanted to live and what she wanted to show to Latvians and what she wanted to teach to Latvians also and what was very modern for that time and very European and. Um, yeah, it's so that's is that how you kind of prepared for the role as well? Did you read these magazines and try and get like uh... Uh, also not of course I tried to find uh, tried to find uh, everything uh, about uh, about uh, Emilia. There are some books, for example, there are these memories of her sister Annie Simpson and. Uh, of course, very inspiring was um, uh, Lime Muktpavel's book uh, about Emily. But uh, we no voice records, no uh, no filmed material. So I had to use uh, my imagination. Of course, we had a lot of photos, and I tried to to think about her psychophysic. I uh, read the photos, how she, how she, of course, mo most of them are posed. And uh, I, but anyway, I can uh, see how she wanted to, mm -hmm. uh, how she wanted to look, look like and how she smiles, how she keep, how he stands, uh, how she stands, how she keep their hands, their legs, uh, uh, how she smiles, and uh, then I use my imagination, and I try to imagine how she laughs, how she moves, how she talks, uh, uh, mm, but uh, uh, of course, when we start uh, started to film, I forgot about Emily, uh, and I just uh, try to be that uh, ambitious and very influential, very, very influential and powerful and gifted and creative and, and brave and unapologetic, uh, self-made uh, woman. And uh, yeah, and what, uh, what I, uh, for example, a uh, rumor for me, it was very inspiring. <laughs> she, and uh, that she is uh, rumors. Uh, the rumor uh, tells that she is the first Latvian woman uh, uh, who did a um, plastic surgery. So wow, she went I hadn't to, heard that. Yeah, she uh, went to Switzerland to make some plastic uh, operation, and it uh, it's uh, uneasy to imagine how how brave she was and how she uh, take this advantage, took this advantage. And yeah, uh, I just, yeah, she's a... That's really interesting. So yeah. both of you mentioned that um, in the research you were doing, you kind of made her, since she's such an icon or maybe such a strong figure in our like national consciousness, but you found kind of a little more like negative sides or which make her more human. Were either of you ever nervous about showing that on screen, that people would be upset? Like, how can you make her not completely positive? Uh, was that something that entered into your thinking? Mm. I couldn't say that we discover her, uh, as I told, these dark sides, because uh, 
Some of them, I think, were quite well known. If you had interest about her and and, and read about history and uh, uh, about her figure in history, so I couldn't say that we were first who discovered it. Maybe we were first who said it um, aloud or louder than others, because cinema is extremely popular genre, and it's a big it's a big difference if you. Uh, do a historical research or you if you are doing a uh, television miniseries but i think that we were not afraid i think that it was um, for me uh, it's always most interesting and i also think about the viewers that it's more interesting and also i would like to say more healthy for him to see that all these people are hero and even adored people, they are not monuments, they are lived people and they are making their choices and sometimes these choices had some balance on some ethical uh, or, or morality or, um, yeah, yeah, so they are live and um, mm -hmm. they are not made from uh, papier mache or, or mm -hmm. from your gold mm -hmm. yeah and that's also for me that's why it's interesting to, it was interesting to play the emily and to uh thought about her because she's very very controversial and very very full she's yeah. com complete person she's not a simple character she's not just uh, black or white. She is a very, very bright and colorful uh, person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things I felt that made her very, um, very human was her relationship to her um, assistant slash friend, uh, Berta. Could, Guna, can you talk about working with the actress Baiba Broca and Christine, maybe in your episodes, what did you try and um, do with this, this relationship? Did you have any input in how it was going to develop? Either, Guna, sorry, either of you. <laughs> yeah, Guna, maybe you can start. I can start because uh, I guess that, uh, so uh, we are very good friends and very good colleagues with Bab. We even, uh, we, are, we share a dressing room in New Rig Theater. So I guess that our producers and directors uh, knew it and just uh, use um, our, our, uh, our good relationship and, uh, but uh, it also, it helped, uh, of course, and it was, it is, it was very easy to play that scenes and also to, uh, sorry to our, to our script writers, but we, uh, we took the liberty to change and, uh, and uh, tweak and, uh, uh, and also develop a little bit our uh, relationship uh, uh, between our characters uh, because uh, uh, because it wasn't so difficult because uh, Bertha's character is a compilation. So uh, yeah, it was a, a kind of pleasure. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. So you kind of you both worked on the like you ch you you made suggestions if you wanted it to go a little. Yeah, there was a lot of improvisation, uh, a lot of improvisation, and uh, yeah, and uh, our real, real mm -hmm. relationship, very friendly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. Bert, is, I have to say uh, that Bert's character mostly is uh, invented. Of course, we have some. Uh, we have some. Uh, rumors or we have some memories that there was some assistant or let's say stride made for Emily who used to be very close for uh, her but there um, was not any proper evidence of her or uh, about her personality about um, her character so we invented this Bertus character a lot there is a lot of fantasy and when we put this character in a script, the main reason was that we wanted to be uh, her like alter ego of Emilia. 
because Emilia is always very bright, very uh, brave. Emilia always is, she's the winner. She's a self-made woman. And then we need that episodes where we could show that Emilia is also weak, that she had some fear, that she's affected, that she's down. And these dialogues with Berta, who used to be her alter ego, was a very good platform to realize all these uh, artistical purposes we needed for our script. So actually, this Berta's character is, I think, one of, she, it's not pure historical, it's invented, but it served a lot uh, mm -hmm. for um, developing our script and uh, Emily's character, I think so. No, definitely. It, no, it, it comes across and it, yeah, it was interesting to hear that you kind of made, made the relationship more organic and had some input, I think, but it's good that the project had the flexibility to, to do that. Um, so to wrap things up, um, it sounds like it was a great COVID project and everything seems to have come together in such an amazing way. And now I'm curious as to, it's been uh, available to the public for a little over a month, if I understood, if I remember. Yeah, it was about? on September 20, yeah. Right, and what's the feedback you've been getting? And and so maybe people who are watching this don't know, but Latvia is in a very strict lockdown right now. We have a curfew at 8 p.m. So obviously cinemas are closed and closed about two weeks after the film or the series premiered. So, but it is still available to audiences online. And I'm just yeah curious about what the feedback is and if it's still ongoing. It's still available, yeah, on VOD platform. Mm -hmm. uh, and we managed it to get one month on screens. So uh, the system how we showed the film was uh, divided, the film was divided into two packages, into four, three packages, first and second episodes, third and fourth. And mm -hmm. this first four we managed to show on big screens. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, we didn't know when we, um, it was absolutely, uh, we were unsure how people will attend because it's television series, you know how people will attend it in cinemas and big screens, but it was one of the top films. And of course, one reason is that, as I said, Emily is really a popular person and people are, uh, that was, we knew, we knew that people will be uh, curious about Emily and about her fate and about film about her. Mm -hmm. But of course, it was uh, also some risk um, because a lot of people, mostly they have had very strong opinions of, about her and how the film should be and how the story should be told. And that was, we couldn't predict how people will accept our version and they accepted it. So we are very happy about this. And Guna, what have you heard or have people come up to you and said something? I have a very good, uh, very. Uh, the biggest compliment for me is that uh, relatives of Emily uh, enjoyed our oh, wow. our mm -hmm. job, and so I'm very glad about this uh, about this project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I loved the commentary from. I I do not remember which one relative, but uh, the commentary was. You know, Emily, she wasn't so clever and so splendid as you as you are uh, showing her in the film. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and some of relatives said that they, uh, of course, among relatives, there are people who never saw Emily and never met her in life. And some of the relatives told after the premiere that first time they uh, felt that they belong to this family and they started to... Wow. realize how big and important and interesting uh, this family was. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. It sounds like you really uh, struck, a, struck a nerve in, in society. And um, that's all we have time for today. But I hope uh, you guys watching at home uh, enjoyed the series as much as apparently you guys did making it and as much as I did um, sharing it with you. And um, please watch the rest of the films in the festival and Join us again next year. Thank you.